Hello, welcome back. This is Math and Chemistry Part 1.4, Temperature Conversions and Significant Figures, also known as Sig Figs. So let's talk about our aim today. We have a little more math to do. So if you turn to Table T on the back of your reference table, you'll find the formula for converting temperature from Kelvin into Celsius and Celsius into Kelvin. So on the reference table, you'll find the formula. Uh, Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Okay, so we will use this formula for converting Celsius to Kelvin and Kelvin to Celsius. So let's practice a couple. We're going to convert 100 Kelvin into Celsius. So first write your formula. We have 100 Kelvin. equals Celsius plus 273 subtract 273 from each side subtract 273 and we get uh, Celsius equals one, negative 173 in degrees Kelvin Okay, so some simple rearranging our math. Now going 232 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, again write out your formula, is degrees Celsius plus 273. Okay, if we have 232 degrees Celsius, we would just add 273 to that. You can use your calculator at this point. Kelvin equals 505. Okay, so, so simple, some simple conversions. Now significant figures. Okay, this is this we have to get some rules down for working with significant figures. So let's start. What does the word significant mean? So if you have a significant other or anytime the word significant is used, it means something that's important. So for significant figures, it's really important when we're reporting measurements in science especially that you're honest about your measurements. So you don't want to make them seem more accurate than they are when you're measuring something. So you can't give numbers that are more accurate than the instrument that you use to measure is capable of reporting. So we give the numbers that we're confident about and just one number of estimation, which when you're using different measurement tools, you'll, I'm going to show you some examples of how this works. Okay, so if we're using a triple beam balance, let's read off our measurement here. What would be our weight? So we're in the hundreds right here, so it's 373. And we are able to say it's 373.3, and it's a little bit in between there. So we can estimate in between these two lines, so we're able to estimate one place. So we know it's 373.3, .3 and we can give one more digit of estimation. So we're going to estimate this digit and say we have 373.3, .3 and I think that that is about another point four. So 373.34. This is the one place of estimation. We are confident about these digits, 373.3, .3, and we estimated the fourth. So how many significant figures do we have? In this case, we have five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five significant figures. We cannot estimate any further than that. Okay, if we're using a beaker, Okay, so take a look at my beaker. What is the volume shown by this tool? So this is 20, 30, 40, this would be 50. So this is 40, and we need to estimate to come up to this place here. So I'm going to estimate that that's about 46. So I have 46 milliliters as my measurement. The 40 I'm confident about and I'm estimating this last place of 6. So 46 is my final answer. And so how many significant figures was this? In this case we only have two significant figures. Okay, now I'm going to use a graduated cylinder. How can, I, how can I get my measurement from my graduated cylinder? So again, this is the graduated cylinder. I've blown it up to show it 
you know, just the part where the water is. So, of course, looking at it eye level, you read the meniscus, and let's get our measurement. So here's 40, and here's 50. So how much are my lines moving by? They are moving by ones. So I have 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Of course, we measure at the bottom of the meniscus. So 46, and it is right on the line. So I'm going to say that that is 46.0. It's not in between. 46, I'm confident about, 0 0.0, I am estimating as my final digit. So in this case, I have three significant figures. Okay, one, two, three. Which instrument is more accurate, my graduated cylinder or my beaker? Okay, so which um, instrument gives us more significant figures? You'll have more significant figures the more accurate that instrument is. You're able to break it down to a more precise measurement. So your graduated cylinder is more accurate and gives a measurement with more significant figures than a beaker. So let's talk about some rules for sig figs. So the first rule is that all non-zero numbers are always significant. If it's not a zero, it is significant. Okay, so here's our non-zero numbers, all our regular digits, one through nine, always significant. If you have a zero, this is where it gets a little funky to work with, but we're gonna get this broken down for us. If the zeros are between two uh, non-zero numbers, they are definitely significant. Okay, so if you have 1,002, how many sig figs do we have here? The zeros are between, so they are one, two, three, four significant figures. Here, our zeros are also between our digits, so we all of the numbers here are significant. One, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. And in this one as well, the zero is in between, so you'd count every digit here as significant. Now, when you have a decimal, you start from the left, you start from the decimal, and you count the first non-zero number, and everything after it is significant. So, we start the decimal, we get to our first non-zero number, and everything after is significant. There's nothing after. So this only has one significant figure. The leading zeros are not significant. We get to our first non-zero number and we have a one. And so everything after it is significant. So this has three significant figures. So let me just write that down for us here. Here these do not count until you get to the first um, whole number that's non-zero. So this only has one sig fig. In our next example, when we hit the first whole number that's not zero, we count everything after it when it's after the decimal. So we, this has three significant figures. Next we have 123.560. So here we start at the first, coming from the left, one, two, three, four, five, six. Everything is significant in this example. So this has six significant figures. And here again, as soon as we hit the first whole number, it is significant. So one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Once you hit your first whole number, when you, there's a decimal, you are significant and everything after it is as well. Now, numbers without a decimal. Okay, If there's no decimal, we're going to start from the right and count the first non-zero number and then everything after going to the, to the right will be significant. So, for example, if we start from the right, we hit the 1, this is the only significant figure. These two zeros are not significant. So if there's no decimal, we go from the right and we hit the first one and there's nothing after that, so just one significant figure. Okay, we come from the right, 1, 2, 3 significant figures. The zeros between the two numbers. As soon as you hit the whole number, everything after it is significant. No decimal, we start from the right. These are zeros, we don't count them. One, two, three. Three significant figures. No decimal, we start from the right. One, two, three, four, five significant figures. Hint. Here's a hint, and actually this is something good to write on your reference table. On the front cover, there's some room on the bottom, so I suggest you write this hint in. If there's a decimal present, if the decimal is present in a measurement, start on the Pacific side. So if you imagine a little map of the United States, which you might want to draw on your reference table as well. I'm an excellent artist. Don't be jealous. This would be the Atlantic Ocean, and this would be the Pacific Ocean. 
Okay, so this is on the left side and this is on the right side. If the decimal is present, you're going to start on the left side and work towards the right until you hit the first non-zero digit. Everything after it is significant. If the decimal is absent, there's no decimal. Now you're starting on the Atlantic side, on the right side, and you go towards the left and count for the, from the first non-zero digit and everything before that would be significant. So no decimal, you start on the right and hit your first non-zero number. So I suggest you write this and you know write it maybe in a abbreviate this to something that works for you so that this is on your reference table. So our aim now is to use some sig figs. Let's practice a little. So adding and subtracting with sig figs. Okay, so these are two other rules that we'll also add on to our reference table. When you're adding and subtracting, you count the significant figures to the farthest decimal place that the numbers have. So you can only go as far through decimal places in your answer as the one with the least amount of decimal places. So for example, if we are adding up these three numbers, so let's add this up. Okay, so we're going to add, we have 1, we have 5, 13, 4, and seven. Make sure you keep your decimal in there. So if I just add this up, I get 7.4351. However, if we're measuring something and using significant figures, we need to count how many significant figures we have and use whatever there are with the least. So when adding and subtracting, you count how many decimal places we have. So this one has four decimal places. This one has three decimal places and this one has two decimal places. So our answer for addition cannot have more than two decimal places. So in this situation, we need to um, go to the two decimal places, okay, and round properly. So this one would be 7.44, okay, this would round up from three with the five here, would round up to four. So our answer in significant figures would be 7.44. The same thing for subtracting. You cannot give an answer um, with more significant figures than the least in our measurements. So you'd be giving too much accuracy, more than you're able to really give. So here, we'll you're going to use the measurements as is and round at the end to the correct number of significant figures. Okay, so if you put that in your calculator, this is what you'll get. Now, you need we using significant figures. There's only two decimals in this one and three in this, so our answer can only be to two decimals. So this is a 2, so this would end up 5, 3, oh, 9, 0, 0.98. Okay, so you can't use more significant figures than the least given. Multiplying and dividing is similar. Okay, you count the total number of significant figures in each number and use the least for the answer. So if we're multiplying these two numbers and we want significant figures, okay, when you multiply this out, um, in your calculator, this equals 2.57964. Now, this is way more places than we can possibly have measured. So we have to count for multiplication and division the least number. So here we've got, we're starting from the left side, the decimal is present. So we start from the Pacific side and count one, two, three, four significant figures. And here we also have a decimal. So we start on the left side, one, two, three significant figures. We need to go with the least. So we can only give this answer with three significant figures. So one, two, three, this is all we can give. And count, look over here, we have a 9, so we need to round this number now to just three significant figures, so we would get 2.58. Okay, the next one we're dividing. So in your calculator, do the division. 2.56156006. Oh, six. This is what the calculator spits out. Okay, now we're dividing with significant figures, so we can only use the least number of significant figures. The number has a decimal, so we start from the left. One, two, three significant figures. This number has a decimal, we start from the left. One, two, three, four significant figures. So our answer cannot have more than three significant figures. So, one, two, three significant figures. This tells us we stick, we don't bump up one. So we end up with an answer of 
Now, rounding with significant figures, you're going to do just as you would do in normal math, just as I showed you in the prior two examples. So first, complete the problem. Don't change your numbers until after you've done the addition and subtraction, multiplication, or division. Complete the problem, and then worry about your significant figures. All right? So you determine the number of sig figs the answer has to have after you've done the math. Look at the number after the last significant figure and rounds just as you would do in any other answer. If the number is less than 5, it remains the same. If the number is more than 5, you round up. So you either stick if it's less than 5 or you bump up 1 if it's more than 5. So for example, if our calculator spits out 2.343 and you only need 3 sig figs. So right now we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So we want to just be with 3. We check this fourth number. It's less than 5, so we remain the same. So it's 2.34. Okay, this is what our calculator spits out, this long number. But we can only have four sig figs according to whatever that problem showed us in numbers. So we can only have four. So remember, when there's a decimal, we start with the first whole number. One, two, three, four sig figs. We check the next number, and this tells us we need to bump up one. So we have 0 0.15. And we've got 89, so 89 will bump up 1 to 90. And that completes Unit 1.4 on significant figures and temperature conversions. See you next time.